Hey everybody, welcome back to Backcountry Amateur Radio. My name is Eric, KI7WJP, and my GMRS call sign is WRFS364. Um, today, I'm gonna talk about the GS5B. Uh, I guess this will be part five, I forgot, which I produced a bunch of videos about this radio. This is my second GS5B as I gave away the first one. Um, I do like this radio, it's a lot of fun. Right now it's in its stock configuration. Um, the stock antenna I'm pretty satisfied with and using a, an inline SWR and power meter, um, it seems to do just fine. So uh, I don't think it's quite five watts by the way, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna hit on this thing again, the, the screen. Um, you know, I've gone back and forth a little bit with radiotity, but the screen is definitely a little bit of a drawback in bright light. So high in the mountains when you have a lot of sun, I do shade the screen. Um, there's just no way around that. You can go in and change the backlight parameters from one, one second, five seconds to, to bright. Bright just leaves it on. So that drains your battery pretty quick, but it is still difficult to see. The screen is reflective. Um, so it can mirror the image of the sky or the color of the sky. So anyway, that's, that's the thought there. But again, that's a small drawback. I can still really use this radio well. Um, so I wanna get into advanced scanning. Um, this has a menu item called search frequency, which allows me to search a wide range of frequencies. And what's really cool, when it lands on the frequency, it also will land on the tone or CTCSS or DCS that that signal might be using. So that enabling you to communicate with, with a party who may be using one of these. Um, an emergency scenario, that's gonna be a pretty handy tool. So, um, what I've done is I've set this up on channel one, 29. And as you know, these radios don't do 29, like CTCSS or privacy tone or whatever, 29 corresponds to 179.9 over here in our programming. So you're gonna see this perform really well. Uh, and partly it's gonna be proximity, but the longer that whoever's using this party or this, this radio, as long, the longer they use it, the longer they're on the air, the more likely you are to pick up their frequency and their privacy tone. Uh, now, just as a matter of course, if you are in the backcountry and you are using radios and there's no reason for you to use tones, leave your frequencies open. So turn off your tones, turn off your codes. So CTCSS and DCS, turn them off. Uh, in the event that someone needs to try to communicate with you, it's a whole lot easier if they don't have to figure out if you're using a code or not in order to do that. Because if they're off on their tones and codes, you won't be able to hear them if yours are on. Just a piece of advice. So uh, let's, let's get into scanning with this thing. This is a little bit longer video. It is a little bit technical, but I hope that you can see the usefulness of it. The second part will be uh, adapting our knowledge of using ham radio repeaters and finding a repeater in use and doing a search on that frequency, uh, both the uplink, downlink, and then discovering the code that people are using to key the repeater. I can do that with this radio. Um, and I'll show you how to program that. And that'll be the second half of this video. So if you're not interest, interested in scanning for just a simplex communication, uh, skip to that next part. So uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, so I'm filming in this light because it just, it's better for this screen. I did do it outside once. Um, anyhow, a couple of things to note. You can start the search frequency from channel mode. This is in channel six or from VFO mode. Now, even if I've got this programmed with offsets, um, like for a repeater, it will not um, save it with repeater uh, features, which is why we're gonna do the second part of this later. Um, so like the offset of 0.6 megahertz or, you know, it just doesn't have the ability to do that. So uh, it will save it if you program it that way. But when you're doing the scan feature 
followed directly by a save, it will save it as a simplex, which is radio to radio. So let's go back in here. And then you kind of have to be quick because once you uh, get this going and have your information displayed on the screen, once the, the menu times out, it goes back to the screen and you have to start over. So, um, you know, be on your game. So anyhow, what I'm going to do first is hit my side button, which I've got programmed to change power levels. So hold down, watch that H turn to L up there. And that's because I want this to be saving as low power. So let's go back in the menu here and go up to search frequency. And, and as soon as you hit menu, it starts searching. And you see channel one is pretty close to 462 megahertz. So it's only half, half a megahertz away, really. Um, so now I want to hit menu. And it gives me, it takes me into memory save. Notice that L for low power. I want to save it as low power. That way it defaults to it. I'm going to save it in channel six. Um, and there we go. Do, do, do. Channel six. Saved. And all that without even going into VFO. Unfortunately, it did save it as high power. And I don't understand why it defaults to saving high power. But keep in mind uh, of that factor when you are going to use these radios. Um, now obviously, this is a ham radio. It's illegal to use these on FRS and GMRS frequencies. Um, I hope that was slow enough because uh, I do have to work with the timing of the radio. But you can see it saved all that information. And to double check here, I want to show you uh, that it did save the CTCSS. Receive. 179.9 and 179.9 on transmit, which actually saves you a step. It defaults to that because it understands uh, how uh, simplex works. So that's actually a really cool feature. Uh, and if you want to test it, test it from your FRS radio. FRS, channel one, channel one. The signal is coming through. Channel one, channel one. FRS radios suck. <laughs> I mean, they work, but man, the the PTT delay is just, yeah. Anyway, so that's that. Let's move on. Okay, so check this out. Suppose you're just scanning along. Peter is located on oh. Peak, north of Heber Valley. And you find Require somebody on a repeater, but you don't know enough information about it. Let's try something. Repeater is located on Scott Hill in Summit County. Um, repeaters and usually have a tone, and we know we just can't guess what the tone is. So I'm going to show you some really cool stuff. So repeaters, ham radio, and VHF have an offset of... Um, 0.6 megahertz so I want to show you I'm just gonna let's let's take a guess here let's say um, we want to hear what the radio operator is saying from their radio so 0.6 megahertz let's tune to 147.8 just to see if that's what they're coming if they're transmitting on that do, 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 do. oh check that out so I can hear that person directly from the radio. This is the uplink to the repeater. We need to know the tone that he's using to activate the repeater. So check this out. Search frequency. And so it did finally find the tone that we were using for this repeater. It's 88.5. I picked it up from 
one of the operators transmitting signal so let's go ahead and program this repeater we know the offset we know we know the tone uh, let's let's go back and make some changes here okay this is our, our receive frequency from the repeater and uh, we know that we need to set a tone and a positive offset. So we'll transmit tone, which is transmit CTCSS. Um, that's what the radio found. It's just so cool. Um, and there we go. I'm The bar selects, so I'm gonna hit menu to select 88.5. And I'm gonna back out of the tone menu or the code menu. And I'm going to keep this running in the background because I think it's kind of fun. Um, then go to frequency mode. And we don't need to worry about step. Direction is what we need. So hit menu to enter direction. Uh, positive offset or plus. And you can go back and double check your work. So plus. Um, and then the next one is to go to menu 3. Offset. Which I've already got programmed for 6 megahertz. 0.6 megahertz. So now... I have this programmed to this repeater, uh, and I didn't look up a single repeater in the directory. Um, how cool is that? So let's save that in the menu. So let's save this into our channel two now. So um, hit menu, and just scroll until you get to channel storage. Select channel storage with the menu key, and go down, nope. Just leave it on channel memory. This will store a memory. So select menu and hit. I'm going to put it in channel two. Seems fair. And menu to select channel two. Saved. And um, menu. Hold down on menu to enter channel mode. And there you go. It's in there. And let's see. Maybe one more thing. Go into menu. Go to channel storage. Now, this is a feature that I think uh, is so cool that you can do this on, on the radio so easily. Select by pressing menu. Now, this only goes in in channel mode. If you're in VFO mode, you, you don't have this third option in channel storage. edit name and I'm gonna call this the Heber repeater remember those old flip phones when you go to text messages how you text out entire sentences and press menu to save exit exit Heber Check that out. All right, so now we're gonna see how this works. KI7WJP. They keyed up the repeater. And all that without looking up information online. And there's no reference book just used the, uh, the ability of this radio to scan for tones. Um, this isn't always going to be possible. So just keep in mind that somebody else accessing the repeater needs to be pretty close to you within maybe a couple of miles so you can catch their signal and then program your radio. So just keep that in mind. This is not a foolproof plan. But it is cool that you can do it. All right, everybody. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for coming by the channel and uh, helping me make this better. And all your support, comments, feedback, everything. Um, I will be getting into some of the details about the last giveaway and some of the feedback I got back here, probably in the next video, hopefully. Um, right now, I'm in the midst of uh, starting a small business and doing a bunch of other stuff. So 
I will have a lot of radio silence on the channel, but I try to get back to comments and things in a timely manner if I can. Um, also, please subscribe, please share. I would love the continued support of, uh, of you guys, uh, my viewers, and um, you know, about 90% of the people who watch my channel are not subscribed. So think about it. If you feel like this is worthwhile, uh, please subscribe and, and uh, help support the channel. I really appreciate that. Anyhow, thanks again for coming by and watching this video. Happy trails out there. Backcountry Amateur Radio.